Dr. Flora Murray and Dr. Garrett Anderson made history at Endell Street. Through their initiative, endeavour and efficiency, they opened the doors to further fields of opportunity for women physicians and surgeons, and not only for medical women, but for all women who are setting out or have already set out to conquer fresh territory. It would be difficult to put into words the pride with which the members of the Women's Hospital Corps served their country in the Great War. It is not to be wondered at that the success of this military hospital, officered, staffed and run entirely by women, became a source of immense satisfaction and pride to all women but more especially to those who had taken an active part in the struggle for the suffrage. On the 4th of August 1914, Britain entered the First World War. The fighting had only been underway for a few weeks when the first women's organisation of the British war effort went into active service. On the 15th of September 1914, the personnel of the Women's Hospital Corps boarded a train at Victoria Station in London and left for France. This uniformed and disciplined unit, proudly bearing the title Corps, was not part of the British Armed Services. It was an independent initiative by two remarkable female doctors, Dr. Louisa Garrett Anderson and Dr. Flora Murray. Chapter 1. Dr. Murray and Dr. Garrett Anderson Louisa Garrett Anderson was the daughter of Elizabeth Garrett Anderson, the first woman to qualify as a doctor in Great Britain. She was born in Alborough, Suffolk in 1873. Flora Murray was born in Murraythwaite, Dumfrieshire in 1869. Both decided on medical careers from an early age. Louisa Garrett Anderson qualified as a doctor in 1900, Flora Murray in 1905. Both Garrett Anderson and Murray became activists for the cause of women's suffrage in the early 1900s beginning as supporters of the moderate National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies before gravitating to the more radical Women's Social and Political Union. Both women were very active in the suffrage movement. Louisa Garrett Anderson was arrested at the WSPU's Black Friday protests in Trafalgar Square in 1910, which became violent when the suffragists were attacked and assaulted by the police and male bystanders. She was released without charge on that occasion, but was arrested again in 1912. She had thrown a brick through the window of a politician's house and served a four-week term of imprisonment with hard labour. Flora Murray served the cause as a doctor, using her skills to treat women injured in protests or harmed by force-feeding and other maltreatment in prison. It was through the suffrage movement that Murray and Garrett Anderson met and forged what was to become an enduring professional and personal partnership. The two lived together and worked together in a mutually devoted lesbian relationship that only ended with Flora Murray's death in 1923. Louisa Garrett Anderson died in 1943. The epitaph on their joint memorial at Holy Trinity Church in the village of Penn, Buckinghamshire, reads, We have been gloriously happy. Chapter 2. Women Doctors Go to War With the outbreak of war in 1914, the main Votes for Women organisations, including the Women's Social and Political Union, ceased their campaigns and adopted a patriotic stance of supporting the war effort. Louisa Garrett Anderson and Flora Murray 
entered the World War as veterans of the War for the Rights of Women and the struggle for female advancement in the medical profession. They were highly qualified and very experienced doctors, but, as with many female medical practitioners, they were professionally frustrated. Medicine remained a male-dominated, male-centered and misogynistic profession in which women were almost invariably excluded from the positions that would have enabled them to gain experience, develop their careers and show what they could do. Insofar as there were appointments for female medical practitioners, they tended to be in women's and children's medicine, and there was strong resistance to the idea of female doctors treating male patients. In the pre-war press and popular culture, female doctors were often the subject of caricature and mockery, reflecting their marginal professional status. The war brought an opportunity for women doctors to challenge these prejudices and break down barriers, and to be accepted on equal terms with men. Garrett Anderson and Murray seized that opportunity. Determined to put their skills at the service of the war effort and to assist the cause of women, they conceived the idea of a medical unit staffed and led entirely by women, which would establish a military hospital to serve the men who were going to the continent to fight. They knew better than to waste their time going to the war office. The Scottish surgeon and suffragist Elsie Inglis, founder of the Scottish Women's Hospitals for Foreign Service, had offered her services to the army, and the official response had been, My good lady, go home and sit still. Nor was the British Red Cross interested. Inglis's services had at first been taken up not by the British but by the French, who were critically short of medical staff and hospitals, and Murray and Garrett Anderson followed the same path. The French were prepared to accept the services of the Women's Hospital Corps. Under French auspices, they were able to set up their hospital at the Hotel Claridge in Paris, which had been taken over by the French Red Cross. They had negotiated arrangements with the French, raised finance, recruited personnel and purchased the necessary stores and equipment all within one month of war breaking out, and by the end of September 1914, their hospital was up and running. It was very successful, treating thousands of casualties, and was highly regarded by both French and British medical authorities. A branch hospital was opened in November at Wimereau near Boulogne, and that too operated very effectively, and won the Women's Hospital Corps high praise. The Paris hospital closed in January 1915, with staff and medical services being concentrated at Wimereau. This hospital was under the direction of the War Office, which meant that one of the aims of Murray and Garrett Anderson, of seeing female medical services accepted by the British authorities and women surgeons working directly under the very War Office which had rejected their advances six months earlier, had been fulfilled. Chapter 3 The Endell Street Military Hospital Further official confirmation that the Women's Hospital Corps had proved its worth came in February 1915, when it was agreed that, as hospital services for British wounded were increasingly moved back to Britain from France, the women would be given charge of a hospital of significant size in London. Official backing from the War Office did not mean, however, that progress would be straightforward, or that opposition would fall away. The Royal Army Medical Corps was responsible for military medical services and continued to resist the idea of female military doctors or female-run military hospitals. As they set about making the new hospital a reality, the women continued to meet obstruction and hostility. As Flora Murray recalled in her memoir of 1920, women as army surgeons. Advice and assistance were withheld, lest the officer who gave it might in some way become responsible for the women's affairs, and in addition, their path was often obstructed. It was not understood at the time that obstruction was due to hostility. It was taken for stupidity, or the way in which things were done at the war office, and after two or three fruitless visits to the branch offices of the Army Medical Department, no further time was wasted on these gentlemen. 
other sources of information or other ways of getting things through were discovered. Despite the difficulties, a former workhouse on Endell Street in Bloomsbury was acquired for the new hospital, and conversion began on the buildings, which consisted of four or five-storey blocks around a central courtyard. When Murray and Garrett Anderson first visited the site, they were thrown out as unauthorised visitors on government premises by the gatekeeper, and even once conversion began they encountered obstructive and hostile attitudes. The RAMC colonel in charge of the work greeted them with the words, Good God, women, and refused to help them, eventually storming off the site and taking his deputy with him. But despite all the problems, the two women and their allies succeeded in getting the conversion finished. The Endell Street Military Hospital opened in May 1915. It had 17 wards, each one named after a female saint, from St Anne to St Veronica, and contained 520 beds, later expanded to nearly 800, with the addition of three auxiliary hospitals. There were two operating theatres, a dispensary and a laboratory, and a staff of around 200, 90% of whom were women. Louisa Garrett Anderson was chief surgeon, while Flora Murray was doctor in charge or chief physician and commanding officer of the hospital. The two lived together in the former workhouse master's house, which faced onto the main courtyard of the hospital. Chapter 4 The Painting and Its History In early 1919, the newly founded Imperial War Museum set out to record, through works of art, some of the medical aspects of the recent war. The resulting works would be shown at an exhibition, and would then be held in the museum's collection as a record for posterity. Among the subjects chosen was a surgical operation at Endell Street Military Hospital, which could be painted from life, as the hospital was still open and functioning until the end of 1919. This is the painting that now stands as a record of Endell Street. It depicts an all-female surgical team operating on a male patient, and was painted by Francis Dodd, a well-known early 20th century portraitist who had served as an official war artist and painted many portraits of senior military figures. He painted the portraits of Dr. Louisa Garrett Anderson and Dr. Flora Murray, seen earlier. He was not, however, the first choice to paint the scene at Endell Street, and nor is this painting the original work of art created for this commission. The artist originally commissioned to record an operation at Endell Street was the painter, illustrator and occultist Austin Osmond Spare. Spare was employed to record various scenes at the hospital and to create portraits of people associated with it. He was at the hospital in the spring of 1919 to observe and record an operation, and Julie produced a work in pastel, which was exhibited at the Royal Academy of Arts, with other paintings recording war work, between December 1919 and March 1920. That artwork no longer exists, but the Imperial War Museum did commission a photograph of it, which survives. Problems arose about this work of art once the exhibition closed, it was due to go to another exhibition at the Crystal Palace in June, but before that could happen, Dr Murray and Dr Garrett Anderson contacted the museum and made it clear that they were not happy with the picture, saying that it was a misrepresentation of the work of professional women and was full of errors, which made it an object of ridicule to all those who have some professional knowledge. They asked that the picture be not merely withdrawn from exhibition, but be physically destroyed, on the grounds that the credit of women surgeons is at stake. The Women's Work Subcommittee of the Imperial War Museum accepted the doctor's criticisms, and wrote to Austin Spare in March 1920, asking him to make various changes to his painting, but this he refused to do. Even before receiving Spare's refusal, however, the museum had asked Francis Dodds to paint them a replacement picture. The hospital was closed by this time, 
but Dodds was able to make preparatory sketches by observing operations at other sites and also visited the building, which was still standing, and was able to view the operating theatre. Surgeons Louisa Garrett Anderson and Winifred Buckley and anaesthetist Flora Murray also sat for him so that he could produce accurate portraits. The result was the picture which stands as the official artistic record of the Engel Street Hospital today. Dodd's painting has an atmosphere of intense concentration and focus. The figures leaning in towards the patient are arranged in a triangular composition, emphasised by the beams of light that descend from the lamp above them. This is a composition often seen in religious works, in which, for example, the light of heaven falls upon the Holy Family, or upon groups of saints. The suggestion is that doctors and nurses offer salvation and new life through their healing ministry. The progression of poised hands from the base to the centre of the painting conveys with precision the delicacy and expertise of the surgeons' and nurses' work. The eyes of four of the five women, the two surgeons intensely focused on their work and the two nurses assisting them, are fixed on the incision in the patient's abdomen. The exception is the anaesthetist, who is solely concerned with administering the anaesthetic to the patient and carefully observing his reactions. As a result, her gaze is fixed on the patient's face. The viewpoint for Spare's painting had been from some distance away from the operating table and at a relatively low level, with the women working at the table depicted full figure. Dodds, by contrast, brings the viewer very close to the operation. The procedure is on the patient's upper body, almost certainly for appendicitis, giving him a compositional advantage over Spare, who showed a man undergoing treatment on his lower leg, meaning that a more awkward, full-figure composition was required. It is also surely significant that one of the objections Garrett Anderson and Murray had had to Spare's picture was its cluttered and untidy appearance, suggesting poor organisation and slipshod methods which they did not want associated with themselves or with women doctors in general. Dodd's picture avoids any such criticism in its close focus on the operation and its stripped-down approach, showing only the essentials of the scene. Other than the lamp and a bare corner of the room, no details of the operating theatre itself can be seen, certainly no cluttered floor. The focus is on patient, medical staff and the procedure itself. If the finished painting is compared with one of Dodd's preparatory sketches, it is clear how much he tightened the composition in the final work. He also removed the left-hand figure and the more distant figure on the right, adjusted the position of the anaesthetist's arm so that the patient's face was made visible, and altered the diagonal angle of the operating table to give greater energy to the composition and increase involvement for the viewer. Dodd also, of course, painted his surgeons without their full surgical masks, as with the faces masked, the painting would hardly make sense as a group portrait. His close focus on the operation also makes the portraiture aspect of the painting more convincing and successful. Each woman is clearly recognisable. The names of the doctors, of course, we know, and the nurses are almost certainly portraits of particular individuals as well, even though their names are not recorded. The patient is, of course, a completely passive participant in the operation, prone and unconscious on the table, while the surgical team upright and highly active and focused, perform the operation. But because he is arranged at an angle, he achieves a more dynamic presence, and the clear depiction of his face emphasises his humanity and individuality. The contrast between the man, prone and helpless, and the strong and competent women who are working to save and heal him is very powerful, and embodies the particular character of Endell Street as a citadel of female expertise, an all-women hospital whose patients were almost entirely men. The strong, soldierly character of the face is in contrast to his present vulnerability and passivity. We can see the open wound in his abdomen where the surgeons are working, and his blood marks Dr. Garrett Anderson's gown. Just as blood was shed on the battlefields of the Western Front by soldiers engaged in a struggle to the death, 
So it is being shed again here, in very different circumstances, in a struggle for life. Endell Street Military Hospital received its first casualties on the day it opened, and over the four and a half years of its existence, it treated over 24,000 patients. Daily admissions from the hospital trains that brought the wounded to London averaged around 50 patients a day, many of whom required immediate treatment, so that the surgical staff sometimes carried out 20 operations a day. Together, the women who served at Endell Street saved thousands of lives. When Dr. Flora Murray and Dr. Louisa Garrett Anderson set up the Endell Street Military Hospital, they gave it the motto of the Women's Social and Political Union, Deeds, Not Words. The deeds of the women of Endell Street speak for themselves. This painting serves as some small commemoration of what they achieved. <laughs>